Hey, what's going on everybody? I'm here to give some advice to all of my fellow bass players that are touring, traveling, or gigging, whatever you want to call it. Um, just some bare essentials that you might want to bring with you or have in your gig bag. Let's go. So first and foremost is the gig bag itself, right? Here's mine. This is a mono gig bag. Um, I've had it for about, uh, I can't remember. Uh, it was one of my first tours overseas and I ordered it like two days prior and I had to ship it, fast shipping, whatever you wanna express, whatever you wanna call it. Uh, and it got there the day of <laughs> me leaving to go overseas. I think I went to Switzerland or something like that. Um, that was my first tour, I was like 16, 17 years old. But anyway, uh, so gig bag, nice hefty, strong gig bag. Um, I don't like carrying hard cases, but it's just, it's personal preference. Anyway, let's go to the next. So two, obviously, you need to have your base <laughs> inside your gig bag, all right? <laughs> don't forget that. I actually really did forget my base, my whole entire base um, on one gig before I was driving somewhere. I had some other luggage and I thought I had my base and I thought I put my base in the car and got an hour away or like th two or three hours away, I can't even remember, and realized I didn't have my base in the car at all. <laughs> rookie dumb mistake. Anyway, number three, cables. So this is an MXR cable. Um, I actually have two of these in my bag now. Um, there's a bunch of cap great cables out there, it doesn't matter. This is just the company that I rock with. Uh, and I like these angled cables uh, to go inside your base. And I'll show you real quick. Oh my God, I need to clean it. So here's why I like these angled cables. Uh, you ever been at home or even on a gig? And trust me, it's happened to me uh, where my cord has just yanked out uh, the base. I stepped on it by mistake and it just yanked out. That's because those the straight cords are so much easier to come out than these angled. So if you plug this here and you step on it, it's harder to come out. So I'm, see, I'm pulling on it downward here. It's harder to come out, especially if you secure that up here. So with this angle and that secure right there, you're golden. Are you kidding me? Where the heck? Well, anyway, I can't do number four because number four was gonna be some extra strings. And somehow I forgot to pack some extra strings. I usually have extra strings all the time, extra pack of strings so you never know what's gonna happen, uh, especially if you pop a string or, I don't know. <laughs> you just never know what's gonna happen. Sometimes I've popped a string and haven't had another string, so I always try to carry a pack of strings in my case, and the strings that I carry around has this little symbol on it that looks familiar, and it seems like that can stand for something else too. Anyway, uh, but Dunlop string, stainless steel strings that I use, 45 to 125 if I'm playing a five string. Um, stainless steel, I think I said that. But anyway, those are the strings that I bring for extra strings. You never know what's gonna happen. You always wanna be prepared. Number five, batteries. I always wanna carry some extra batteries as well if you have an active base. That's for my active base guys. Uh, you want to carry some extra batteries because you never know. This is all preparation stuff or just, you know, just being cautious because you never know what's gonna happen. Uh, one time my, my active, uh, my preamp, just went dead, completely dead, and it started distorting. Everybody thought I had a pedal, a distortion pedal on, but that's only because the battery was dying and I didn't have another battery and then it completely shut off. So I couldn't even use the bass at all. Um, so you don't wanna be stuck in that. So that's for my active guys. Um, that was number five, right? So number six, let's go. Okay, so technically this can go for number five along with number five, and that is a tuning winder peg cutter slash thing okay i have no idea what the right name for this is but everything i say in this video is going to be listed in the description so you can grab this it's going to be called a tuning or or unwinder thingy or whatever i don't know but anyway it'll be listed down in the description this is for changing your own strings which i suggest everybody learn to do and also try to learn how to set up your own bass too and i'll be doing some more tutorials on that as well. So this little thing is very handy. It helps you change your strings really quick. Uh, I've changed my strings without one, but it is a hassle to do that without this. But anyway, that's part of number five, okay. Number six, tuner. They have different types of tuners here. 
Uh, this is a Korg tuner. It's a very cheap tuner. I'll put this in the description too. Uh, I use the Snark Snark tuner, uh, which are great. They're like the circular circular tuners. You just put on the edge of your bass and just make sure you're tuned up. Um, that's very important to make sure you're in tune before you play uh, any gig or any uh, show or anything like that. You want to make sure you're tuned up and you want to have a tuner close with you. Now, I go through a bunch of these only because I'm clumsy and I lose them, but they are great tuners. This is very this is like 15 bucks or something like that. I think the Snark is like 20 something bucks or something. I can't even remember. But I'll put both of them in the description if you guys are interested. But you want to make sure you have a tuner, uh, either this kind of tuner or a pedal tuner. Um, there are several of those, but sometimes carrying pedals to me is very clunky and I don't want the extra weight. So I don't, I, you know, I prefer not carrying a pedal, a tuner pedal. But anyway, this works just as great. Okay, I think we're on seven. I'm not really sure. I can't remember. Anyway, but number seven is some little tools. So I have some little tools here, and I talked about earlier about setting up your base yourself. So here in this little baggy here thing that I have, I have like a small screwdriver. You want to make sure this, these things are like tiny, small, uh, only because if you're flying, if you have a huge screwdriver that's like a foot long, they will throw it out. TSA will catch that and throw it out. So you want to make sure they're small. I've been traveling with these size um, tools for years and never got stopped from them. Uh, so here's a little screwdriver here to change the back of my um, compartment on my base to change my battery. Uh, this is a flathead. Um, the other one was a Phillips head. This is a flathead screwdriver. Anyway, um, this is this one is an Allen wrench for the base that I have, the size that I have right now for this base that I'm that I'm uh, that I'm using. Anyway, for that size, I have another Allen wrench for whatever reason. I'm not sure. Almost probably the same size. And then I have one for the truss rod of the base. But anyway, like I said, I'll be getting more into setting up your own base, adjusting your truss rod, adjusting the neck, adjusting the height of the, the action of the base. Uh, oh yeah, and this is Allen wrench is for adjusting the height <laughs> of your action, okay? So, those little essential tools to be able to set up your base uh, just in case anything happens, because sometimes on the plane, uh, the pressure of the plane kind of hurts the neck of the base. Uh, and I would suggest that you, um, what was I gonna say? So I would suggest that you loosen your strings um, all the way, just about all the way. Um, you don't have to take them off, but all the way because the pressure on the plane affects it in some type of way. So you want to be, you don't want it to bend too much and the strings tight already causes that tension on the neck. So you want to loosen up your strings before you fly, especially if it's a long flight, uh, you want to do that. And then you want to have these tools handy just in case something shifts or your neck is different or your neck changes or bends or bows uh, and your action is crazy or wacky for whatever reason. But anyway, I always have this in my base case. But that's number seven. Uh, I think. So I still have a bunch of stuff in my bag, but I won't show you guys because that's not the essential stuff. It's just like extra stuff. Um, I would have brought my GK Plex pedal just to be able to practice with in the hotel room, uh, but I do have a small little interface. Here, I'll show you one second. I do have a small little cheap interface that I've had for years, only to be able to practice with. I plug it up into my computer and voila. I'm able to practice with some headphones. Uh, if I don't have my GK Plex uh, preamp, it's actually at home now, still in my uh, studio setup. Uh, I didn't bring that with me this time, but sometimes I just keep this little small little thing in my case. All right. Uh, okay, next, for this gig, I have some pedals, okay? So, um, just for this case, I have a ditto looper here. I have the Beat Buddy by Singular Sound. Uh, this is a great like drum machine type of pedal. Check it out. I think I did a review on that. Um, MXR, beautiful pedal. Everybody loves the envelope filter. Bass envelope filter, beautiful reverb uh, for this gig. I did a solo gig this time, so that's why I have so many pedals. Uh, and this little pedal board thing I actually made out of a couple pieces of wood and some like Velcro-y, sticky cloth, whatever. Anyway, uh, and then I'll have the description, in the description, these pedals as well, if you guys are interested. This is just what I use for this gig as well. Now, last but not least, I think that was what, number eight? Number nine, I know this is like, this is like a weird, uh, <laughs> a weird essential thing to have in your case, but 
it is hand sanitizer. <laughs> you probably wondering like, okay, hand sanitizer? But anyway, sometimes if you play before a gig, you're shaking people's hands and stuff like that, and you wanna be able to keep your strings as clean as possible. Well, me, I know I do. Um, just, just to make sure you prolong the life of the strings. So what I would do is put some on my hands, my fingers, your fingers can get oily from shaking people's hand or putting lotion on or doing whatever or eating or, you know, if you're in a green room, you got grabbing some snacks and whatever, but just to make sure that oil and stuff like that is off of your hand, I don't have anything extra in here, just hand sanitizer, it really dries out the tips of your fingers um, or the tips of mine. And I really like dry fingers when I'm playing bass, um, oily, slimy slicky fingers is weird to me uh, when I'm playing it just doesn't feel right so just dry fingers just to make sure your hands are clean on top of that and make sure your base stays as clean as possible so that's one of my essentials it might not be yours but hand sanitizer this is from the dollar store uh, you can get this anywhere uh, so I'm not gonna put that in the description all right guys that is it for what's in my case I have a lot more stuff in there but that is for me like other chords um, I ran some tracks so I had another chord in there um, you know just regular stuff I had some business cards in my <laughs> in my case uh, I used to actually carry a soldering uh, iron uh, what is that soldering thing that you the, that you solder wires with I think it's called soldering iron because one time my <laughs> base just completely stopped working and I was like in the middle of nowhere at a gig um, and we were like in the mountains or something. It was at some festival. My bass completely stopped working. I opened it up and one of the wires had detached from the pot or the, from one of the volume pots or something like that. Uh, but anyway, it was, it was not connected. So I had no way of connecting that metal piece or if you know anything about soldering, I had no way to do that. Um, luckily this one guy out of the blue had some equipment that he can do it real quick for my base. It was like five minutes before I had to go on. So I used to carry that, but I'm not as, I'm not as, uh, I wouldn't say as crazy as I used to be, but maybe I really should. I think there's like a small little kick that you can have, but I think that's just overkill. It happened one time. It was just something crazy that happened uh, but anyway you don't have to do that that's, that's just a story all right all of these can be found in the description i just thought it'd be fun to show you guys what i carry in my case or what are some bare essentials that you should carry in your case whether it be hard shell or soft case or gig bag all right guys till next time i'll see you